He, may with the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you and adore you for your amazing love. We worship you. We thank you for uh, this opportunity of gathering us together every day to learn, to teach us your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship you and we exalt you and glorify your name for the kingdom, the power and the glory belongs to you. Thank you for making us partners in your kingdom. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for using us for your glory. And thank you for all that you're teaching us, Lord. I pray for all those who are joining in. Will everybody, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, heal all the wounds of the heart, strengthen them with your strength. Lord, increase your presence in each one's life. And I pray for all the members of the family to be touched by the power of God. And I pray for all those who will be joining in through the YouTube. And I thank you for all that you're doing for those who are watching the YouTube, Lord. Lord, I pray for each one of them once again, that the mighty power of the Holy Spirit fall upon each one of them and upon the nations, Lord. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your angels and camp around us day and night. Let your angels and camp around us day and night. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Teach us and guide us. Teach us and guide us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. So, my yesterday we were learning on uh, prophetic worship and uh, prophetic singing. And I think many of us, after this uh, uh, program was over, I'm very sure you might have spent some time uh, praising and worshiping the Lord. And uh, many have also done it while watching the YouTube also. And there's one thing I want to share about prophetic worship, which I not shared yesterday, that. Um, uh, th th there is a fire of the Holy Spirit that works when you get deeper into worship. And, and, and that fire is a sanctifying fire. A fire that purifies us. The more you worship God, the more you will be purified. The fire of the Holy Spirit will purify us more because the more you worship God, the more you are getting closer to the Lord. Just imagine the 24 elders and the four living creatures around the throne crying out daily, holy, 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 all the time. So when you praise and worship the Lord, uh, the, the, there, is, there is a fire of the Holy Spirit that will function in you, that will sanctify you. And I think yesterday, uh, after watching this program on the YouTube, um, uh, YouTube one family, both mother and daughter, they were, they were praying. They are praising and worshipping the Lord. They felt a desire to worship. And they got a lot of messages. And one is very interesting. They saw a vision of a white swan. And the Lord gave the interpretation. The Lord said, if you keep on worshipping me, you will become more and more whiter than the white swan. If you keep on worshipping me, you will become more and more whiter than a white swan. So that is what worship does, you know. And that is what worship does. And prophetic worship, it surely will bring you to a higher level where you can walk on earth in the glory of God. I, I remember there were days when I was in the center. Um, I used to spend time morning pray, pray, praying in the morning. And then when I'll be heading towards breakfast, uh, I, I'll be praising and worshiping the Lord. And after that, I'll be going for the breakfast. And as I go, I could sense I'm carrying the glory of the Lord. So it's very, you know, very quickly you can, very quickly you can usher in the presence of God when you praise and worship. So this is not limited to uh, certain worship leaders. This is not, uh, this is not limited to only the choir group, you know. It's, it's, it's for each one of us. All of us can tap into this. 
praise and worship. Myself and Amla were North Pole and South Pole in one issue. She used to always tell that only when the Holy Spirit helps you, you can worship God. And, and I, I, I used to tell, no, 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 by faith you can worship God. That means you may not feel anything, that you may not feel anything, and you just take a step forward and just worship. There are days I have worshipped God, I have not felt anything. But next day also I praised and worshipped the Lord. Ramla, it was that the Holy Spirit coming upon her and when she praised and worshipped the Lord. So she had that, uh, uh, that uh, powerful anointing in that area. So we are always on North Pole and South Pole in this topic, you know. And uh, so that is what we have to remember. There are times that the Holy Spirit will lead us to praise and worship. And there are times out of faith you have to do it. You may not feel anything. You, you may not uh, feel any euphoria, any joy. You might not feel anything. But you praise and worship the Lord. So that is what prophetic worship is. The Holy Spirit helping us to praise and worship. And it will be very creative. There will be newness in your praise and worship. I, I tell all the worship leaders, you know, whomever I know and whomever I meet, I, I, I always tell them to spend some time alone praising and worshipping the Lord. And I know that many of the worship leaders do not uh, spend time in pra praise and worship alone. Because they are anointed to do that, so they come on the stage and they simply do it. So just imagine if, if, if you could spend some time every day praising and worshipping the Lord, and then when you lead, how powerful it will become. I, I, I remember insisting one keyboardist and a singer in one of the programs in the center uh, to go and sit in the chapel when there is no uh, singing sessions. You know. He, why, he got irritated at me, you know. Why are you forcing me to sit in the chapel? So that is the condition. You know? But when they come on the stage, they sing well and they praise the Lord and all they do well. And there is some kind of uh, what you call uh, some kind of move of God's spirit. But it could it can multiply if we spend time praying alone and praising and worshiping the Lord. Then we were speaking our prophet is singing, and that is an area where we have not. Uh, tapped into it 100%. We need to uh, go into the presence of the Lord and receive a lot of new songs. It doesn't matter if the songs doesn't, are not recorded. You know, Sometimes we are, so many of the people who write songs, they are very sad because nobody comes forward to record these songs. You know, It is not necessary that all songs should be recorded. If your heart is after God, what is important is that you sing these songs prophetically. As the Holy Spirit reveals to you, you sing out, the, sing out, sing these songs and let people be enriched. So this is one area where we need to, I remember reading a testimony of one, one lady, couple who had no children. So when they, when they went for a retreat and the retreat preacher told them that, uh, told, uh, told you sing. Whenever you are free, you sing. So whenever she at home, she used to sing, you know, and she kept on singing and singing and she became pregnant. And the child was born and they found that child also sings. The child also started singing. So there is something uh, very, uh, something anointed on the, regarding the singing and we know how the secular world have taken advantage of it. You now Satan has taken advantage of it and using this uh, particular gifting of singing. So as you pray in tongues, as you praise and worship, the Lord will give us some songs. And as we sing, very powerful breakthroughs will take place in our life and in others' life also. Now today we are going to look to another uh, prophetic uh, stream that flows from the that flows from the gift of prophecy, and that is uh, prophetic dance. Prophetic dance. We see in the Bible, Exodus 15, 19 to 21. Exodus 15, 19 to 21. 
Wendy, one second. When, for when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the sons of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam, the prophetess, prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her timbrels and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. So after the dance we see, then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with the tambourines and with dancing. So you see, when they saw a wonder miracle of God, they started dancing. And we all know that, you know, God, God, the Spirit of the Lord is inspiring a lot of people to dance. And then there is something called prophetic dancing, where, where you are anointed to dance. And then there, are, there are some little centers where they give freedom to dance. They give a real freedom to dance, where the little picture does not interfere if it goes for an extended time. Even if it goes for an extended time also, uh, the little picture does not interfere. So there are places, those places and all we have noted that the Holy Spirit moves very powerfully and people are, people are very quick to dance in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, I think today is uh, St. Cecilia's feast. That's what the uh, brother Neil has put it in the chat. And uh, so, so there is something called dance anointing. So in the midst of crisis, in the midst of pain, the Holy Spirit can inspire us to dance. And many of them, I think, you know, in that little center, many of them who are dancing were not rich people. There are people struggling day to day life. And they, they were coming for these programs and all in order to freely praise and worship the Lord and to dance in the presence of the Lord. And I think uh, I, I had told this earlier also in one, one 10 day retreat, it was a Garrison retreat, and Amla had gone for the first time. And when, as the, everybody were praising and worshiping and dancing, she also wanted to. Uh, to praise and worship the Lord through dance. And she prayed, oh, Holy Spirit, help me to praise, uh, to, to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And as she kept on saying like this, sudden one electricity passed through her feet. Mm -hmm. The power of God passed through her feet. The power of God passed through her, um, passed through her feet. And she suddenly she started dancing. Mm -hmm. And this dancing continued. She, does, uh, she kept on dancing. And when it was over, she found that she was not sitting on the chair. She was actually not standing near the chair also. When it was all over, she found that she's in the front of the stage. So with her eyes closed, she was just praising and worshipping the Lord through dance. So, so there, there is an anointing that uh, provokes dancing. So many of our, many of are comfortable with normal Christianity, but you know the, there is a work of the Holy Spirit where people are anointed to dance. People who don't know how to do it, they will dance under the anointing. I remember going for a retreat many years ago. The retreat was a very powerful retreat, and there was a lady. Her age was about 80, 80 years or something, and she was dancing in the spirit, and she was wearing the traditional dress, the chatta and mund. This retreat I have attended, I think, about uh, 15 years ago, I think. And she was dancing in the spirit. And later on, when the testimony time came, she was sharing. And, you know, it's impossible to teach an ATO, ATO person about the Holy Spirit. But she was experiencing the Holy Spirit. And she, and she, was, and she was sharing how the Holy Spirit was anointing her to dance. And why? And when it is prophetic, understand a breakthrough will come when when you are dancing. Here we see in two Samuel chapter six verses fourteen. So 
2 Samuel 6:14 yeah 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 and david danced before the lord with all his might and david was belted with linen ephod yeah and david danced before the lord with all his might and he also forgot uh, what was his condition at that time so the, the, there is an anointing uh, for dancing you know so we should all be encouraged and when the holy spirit is leading to dance there will be some breakthrough coming in your life or in somebody else's life. A powerful breakthrough will come. I remember reading long time ago, I don't know, I remember where, a testimony when, when they were expecting a flood in a town. The Holy Spirit anointed one prayer warrior to dance. And as she kept on dancing and dancing under the anointing of the Spirit, the threat of the flood disappeared. That means the water started receding and they, the water came down. So there is an anointing that is help, will, 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 will prompt us to dance. The so body actions, you know, for God it is important because you see the Bible says raise your hands and pray, lying prostrate, kneeling down. They, they are all important in the presence of God. When you look into the book of Exodus, when you look in the life of Moses, where each time he met Pharaoh and came out, the Bible says, he raised his hands and God answered his prayer. The people whose heart is after God, when they raise hands, when they kneel down and, and, and when they dance, no, it means much to the kingdom of God. So let us all be encouraged to uh, regarding this particular anointing. So let us not laugh at people who are dancing, you know. Once I had a very bad experience, you know, in one program, uh, there was one lady dancing, you know, a senior lady, you know, beautifully she was dancing. But somehow when I looked at her, I, I felt like giggling a little bit, you know, little only. And the, the team, the retreat preacher was on the stage. He looked at me, you know, he just looked at me only when grace or repentance came into my heart. So I was grieving the Holy Spirit. By giggling when that uh, lady was dancing under the Holy Spirit. So there is a stream like this. Anybody got any question here? Uh, yes, brother. So yeah. you, uh, you gave this example of uh, having giggled and grieving the Holy Spirit. Right, so, right. so after David uh, danced, so what happened uh, was that uh, when he reached, after David, King David danced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, his, uh, you know, Michal, the daughter of yeah. Saul. So, right, right. so she made fun of him that you are a king, you are dancing like this. So right. she was, she was left without a child to the day of her death. This is the, the, the scripture is uh, two Sam six twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for reminding that. Yeah. So that's it. So we grieve the spirit of God when when we joke and laugh at when the spirit of the Lord is moving. So that is something that we have to remember. Any anybody else got any question here? So another stream that flows that flows from the Holy Spirit is uh, through the prophetic gifting is prophetic art. Prophetic art. Exodus 31, 1 to 7. So in the Old Testament, we see how God anoints certain people for artwork, you know, prophetic art. When the Holy Spirit is guiding you to do something, some painting, some artwork, it is prophetic. As well as 31 verses 1 to 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called my name Bezael, the son of Uri, son of her and the of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, craftsmanship to devise artistic design, to work in gold, silver and bronze, in cutting stone for setting and in carving wood for work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him a whole ape, the son of Ahishma of the tribe of Dan. And I, I have given all Able men ability that they make they may make all I have commanded you. 
the tent of the meeting and the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat that is thereon and all the furnishings of the tent. Yeah. So we see here how the Lord anointed. The Lord anointed uh, a person called Bizali, son of Uri of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, with the ability, intelligence and knowledge in every kind of craft to devise artistic designs, to work on gold, silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, in carving wood, in every kind of craft. So we see there is an anointing uh, for art and art. So that these are the days the Lord is anointing a lot of people to paint, to draw, prophetically. We can see many prophetic paintings at Vatican, several cathedrals and Vesalia. Yeah. Then we also see the New Testament time also, that how many, many, many people were anointed, were led to draw. Uh, to draw the picture. One beautiful example at our time is that um, Saint Faustina, when she got the picture, she got the picture, picture of Jesus drawn, where the two stream of light flows out of him. Two or three stream of light flows out of him. So the, the God used art and paintings also for his name to be glorified and to impart a message. Impart a message. One, one, one Catholic person who had become Pentecostal and later on one day he, he was in the Middle East somewhere in Dubai. So when he went to a Catholic church, when he saw some statues somewhere, somewhere not in, the, not in the church there, but somewhere he saw some statue, some somebody's house, something. Suddenly the Holy Spirit gave him, gave him a revelation. You know, normally this kind of people are very critical in this. And the Holy Spirit told that, that, that statues are the invisible sign, are the visible sign of the invisible world. So statues are the invisible, the visible sign of the invisible world. Yeah, it was the prophetic art, the, the bronze snake that was put on the, it was the prophetic because the Holy Spirit told to do like that. So when they put it and when they looked at the snake, they were all healed. But later on we see uh, they continue to use that for other purpose. That, that was, they were wrong. So it is a prophetic art when the Holy Spirit inspired them to make a bronze snake and hang it on a, uh, on a, on a pole. So that anybody who looks to it will be healed. So Lord has always used the prophetic uh, paintings and artwork to, to convey a message to us. A convey a message to us. Yeah, divine mercy picture has imparted gift of repentance. Then. So, the, so there is an artwork. So we all have to draw, you know. If the Holy Spirit is inspiring to paint, no matter what your age is. And if the Holy Spirit is inspiring to do some artwork, no matter what your age is, then you should be doing. Ezekiel chapter 4 verses 1. This is the Old Testament, you know. And we know about the Ark of Covenant also. How beautiful it was made. And you, O son of man, take a brick and lay it before you and portray, portray upon it a city, even Jerusalem. Yeah. So here you see, and you, O mortal, take a brick and set it before you on it. Portray a city, Jerusalem. So Lord told the prophet Ezekiel, to portray on a brick the city of Jerusalem. So he might have had to draw something. And you know, even the graphic designing, which where people use Photoshop, Photoshop to make many graphic designings, they are also anointed by the Holy Spirit. I remember meeting one graphic designer, a Catholic man, first time when I met him. So he was, I was sitting inside of him, and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I have anointed him, anointed him, you know, anointed him to be creative in graphic designing. And I, I have noted his pictures are very lively and they are colorful and they are very creative also. So, so the, there is an anointing in this area to draw, to paint and for craft works and all, there, there is an anointing. So every, every statue, every statue of the saints of Jesus are are, in, are visible signs of the invisible world. Bible says Jesus died on the cross. 
since died on the cross. But by the statue, we can know that uh, how it is, how the cross looks, and how Jesus is hanging on it. So they, 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 they speak out a message to people. They speak out a message. I remember meeting one Baptist girl in Orissa. She, they, they used to travel a lot, you know. And normally for them, they don't like to go to certain hotels where they're expecting them to, where certain hotels in Orissa, they do a lot of, before they give you the food, they'll do some puja and all and give. Little bit, some puja and all they do and they give that food. So he, she was not happy while traveling. So she, they reached a hotel and then she was wondering what to, she was also hungry, you know. And as she looked around, she saw one photo of Jesus. The sacred heart of Jesus. Then she understood that this, this uh, hotel belongs to a Christian. So, uh, so then she, she became free to eat. It's her attitude. Uh, we leave, it, leave, that, leave that to her. But uh, that's what we find that uh, the pictures and these things and all, they give, they give a message. Uh, they give a message to us. There is a prophetic art, a prophetic painting, and we all should be encouraged to do that. So when pray, the prayer time and all, if you are encouraged to paint something, you paint. Sometimes you may not know the interpretation. You have to draw that, and then you have to ask the Holy Spirit, what can the interpretation be? Or you need to ask someone who has the gift of interpretation, who will be able to interpret what you have drawn. Uh, Amala is to draw. See, many times I'm using the word Amala is not because she was my wife, life partner, but her stand, I saw these things through her ministry. She used to paint a lot of things in, and she never knew the meaning of it. Then I used to put it in a cover and send to one man in Idki. I used to call him on the phone and then we, and he used to send a message or he would phone and tell this particular picture means like this. So, so the, there is an art, artwork that God is releasing into us and we all have to be creative in doing those things. So uh, many times the Holy Spirit has been inspiring a lot of people to uh, paint, you know, and we need to do it. People are told to do the artwork. We need to do it. And that those, but through that, many people will be encouraged. Any, any, anybody got any question here? So another stream that flows from the gift of prophecy is prophetic action. Prophetic action. We can find that in Acts chapter 21, verses 10 to 11. Acts 21, verses 10 to 11. And while we were staying for some days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Yeah. So we see one prophetic action here. While we were staying for several days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. He came to us and took Paul's belt, bound his own feet and hands with it and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, this is the way the Jews of, in Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. Now, Agabas could have easily told that you, you are going to face a lot of persecution in Jerusalem. The Jews will catch you. Uh, they will tie you up and hand, hand you over to the Gentiles. But you see, the Holy Spirit inspired him to, some, to do some, some prophetic action. He came to us and took Paul's belt, bound his own feet, hands with it. So Agabas did a prophetic action there. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will inspire prophetic action. I remember we had a 10 days of our conference in our center. One lady had come from Bangalore and um, she is she, a very prayerful lady. I have seen her many times before in some retreat programs and all. And she was there. And as the praise and worship time and all, she used to make a lot of body actions. A lot of body actions she used to do. And everybody praising and worshipping, she will do like this, like this. So many things she will be doing. So uh, we, do, we did not know what it is. But then I, I always, I knew there is something called prophetic action. 
So this must be from the Lord because when you look at her, she looks different. With all that action, she looks different. And when it is over, she calms down. Present worship is over, she calms down and sits down calmly. Praise the Lord. So that, that, that is how we know that it is the Holy Spirit. So later on when I asked her, when we asked her about it, she said, when the present worship is going on, I am seeing Jesus being scorched. Jesus being scorched, the crown is put on his throat, these things all that she is seeing. And the Holy Spirit is inspiring her to do those body actions. We don't know why. We just don't know why it is allowed. But that is what the Holy Spirit inspired the lady. So like, like a lot of prophecy, actually, I remember uh, one, one person was told to run around the auditorium. And that little preacher said, as you ran around the auditorium, God will take you around the, around the world to preach the gospel. So sometimes there is something called prophetic action where, where, where God, the Holy Spirit inspires us to prophetically show some action. I, I, I met a man in Bombay. <laughs> He's a Hindu man who has come to Christ. He has not received baptism, but he has come to Christ. He has a lot of experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, he, he prays a lot. And uh, he's also from a cancer background, but he has survived since nearly 15, 20 years. Even though he's having a particular type of cancer, which is where many don't survive also. So one day I had gone there, myself, a friend of mine, he was always insisting me to come. So um, both of us had gone, you know. So then he was praying for us. And, you know, he was doing all the prophetic action. The normal people, those who see that prophetic the action, they might think that he's mentally sick. One, one, one prophetic action it showed to me and gave me the interpretation, you know. <coughs> he told when, you, when I was in the prayer group, he said, many people come and call you while you're praying. And you're getting distracted after you come out. And the Lord is saying you to be careful. And if you stop getting distracted, I'll raise you up. So all that he showed in a prophetic action. So prophetically, there is uh, an action that the Holy Spirit inspires us. So laughing at it, joking about it later on with others, and all that grieves the Spirit of God. We can again find it in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 14 to 19. So any action of the Holy Spirit is prophetic. We have to understand. There are various prophetic expressions that the Holy Spirit shows through various people. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 19. Yeah, yeah. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 19. Death of Elisha. Okay, we can read. Uh... Okay. Uh, now when Elisha had fallen sick with the illness of which he was to die, King Joash of Israel went down to him and wept before him, crying, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Draw the bow, and he drew it. Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands. Then he said, open the window eastward, and he opened it. Elijah, shed, uh, Elijah said, shoot, and he shot. Then he said, the Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram, for you shall fight the Arameans in Afek until you have made an end of them. He continued, take the arrows, and he took them. He said to the king of Israel, strike the ground with them. He struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Aram until you had made an end of it. But now you will strike down Aram only three times. So you see here prophet Elisha prophetically telling the king to shoot arrows. The, the, the Holy Spirit inspired 
uh, Prophet Elisha to, uh, to, to tell the king to pick up the bow and arrow and shoot. He shot three times and he stopped. And then uh, again, he says you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Aram until you have made, you made an end of it. But now you will strike down Aram only three times. So we see a prophetic uh, action that the prophetic uh, um, prophet uh, Elisha is asking from the king. You could have easily told uh, you, you will win the victory, but not for a long time. You could have easily told. But then he said like this, because it was the Holy Spirit, it might look like fool, you know. The prophets were ready to take risk. We all have to be ready to take a step forward with the Holy Spirit. Take a step forward with the Holy Spirit. So that is how we, 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 we move with the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus said about a prophetic action, I will show you to you. Luke chapter 6, verses uh, 22 and 23. Blessed are you when men, men hate you and when they exclude. That's the one? It's Luke 6, right? Yeah, you are reading the right one. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast you cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Yeah, yeah. For, so their yeah. father did to the prophets. Yeah. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. And leap for joy. So it's a prophetic action. Where you are told to leap. So you obey the word of God and you leap. To obey the word of God. How can you obey this word? You have by leaping only. You know, there is a scripture which says in uh, Luke 10, uh, 10, 19. See, I give you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions. To tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. To tread on. I remember when I was walking early with Christ in the earlier years, you know, when some, other, some kind of situation came in and I was always inspired to crush the evil one under my feet. Like, you know, those who, those who used to smoke cigarettes, you know, when they put the cigarette butt down, uh, they crush it with the feet. They stamp over it. So in the same way, uh, that there are prophetic actions that comes from the Holy Spirit. When, 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 when he, uh, Moses went up to the mountain to pray and Joshua went to fight a battle, uh, Moses kept both his hands raised up. And he became so tired that uh, Aaron and Hur, had, they were there with him and they were holding on to his hands. So the, the, there is a, a prophetic action. You see the Jericho, when they, they were told seven times to move around Jericho, what was that? They were told to move seven days around Jericho. They were told to keep their mouth shut and keep moving. So everybody was silent. It's a prophetic action that the Holy Spirit demanded that they need to do. So there are prophetic actions that uh, God uh, anoints us to do, and there are many who are anointed to do this. So let us not be troubled, and let us not be ashamed also, and let us not joke about it privately also. These things are from the Lord. Any, any, anybody got any question here? Regarding prophetic actions, regarding prophetic art and prophetic dance, So when these things are all inspired by the Holy Spirit, they all look beautiful. 
they all look beautiful i think in the book of isaiah the lord is saying to the king i think i will make you a i will make you an arrow i will make you an arrow see what what is necessary to say that i will make you an arrow i will make you an arrow in my quiver that means i i will send you where i want you to go so they, they, these things are found in the scriptures god told abraham to take isaac and go up and sacrifice him prophetic action If today we get a revelation like this, we will say it is not from God. So in the prophet Isaiah's life, also we see the prophets were told to walk barefooted. They were walk told to walk naked. They they were all the Holy Spirit revealing to them. So it was a prophetic action from them. Any any anybody got any question here? Then it will be very nice and sweet of you if ever you have laughed at prophetic action. You need to be sorry. It will be very sweet of you if anybody danced under the spirit and you giggled about it and you murmured about it, you grumbled about it, and he came out and joked about it. It will be very sweet of you to repent. Be sorry for that. I told you my own experience. You know, when when an old lady was dancing, I just one just giggling a little bit. You know. Just came and there's a reflection on that my face. I think the brother on the stage when he saw, he just looked at me. You know, he did not look at me sternly or anything. He just looked at me, and immediately the grace of repentance came into my heart because he was he was carrying a weight of glory, a heavy glory in his ministry. A Catholic man. Any any anybody got any questions here? So as we learn to praise and worship the Lord, as we get closer to Him, He might inspire us to dance. He might inspire inspire us to draw. He might inspire us to some some prophetic action. He might inspire us in a personal prayer time and all. Some there, there can be some prophetic action that can come. So let us not be discouraged by it, and let us be encouraged by continuing with it. So we'll pray now, and uh, anybody want to share? Yesterday, while praying, if you got any revelation, you wanted to share, and you did not do it. Anybody want to share? I I, I believe in in teaching completely. I don't believe in teaching half, you know. So I don't I I don't want to only teach what people like, you know. That is why I these are the things normally people don't pick up, you know. But these are all reality. in the walk in the holy spirit why should i drop these things when i know this these things are from the lord so we will pray brother now yeah yeah we pray any any anybody want to share anything which you wanted to share yesterday brother i wanted to share i think from the previous week uh, Um, I wasn't sure whether it's from the Lord, but I think it is. Um, I saw a comb. Uh, comb is a hair brush. Uh, hair brush usually come in black color, but the bristles were white in color. Very peculiar uh, hair brush it was. And uh, as I prayed, I feel that maybe our thoughts are getting sanctified. That is the <laughs> message that God was giving. I think it was on November seventeenth. I've written to Dave Town. and i also saw one more uh, some of these houses in the in the drawing room they keep uh, a decoration uh, flower walls the these are little long ones also sold at the market side tall ones and there are flowers kept in it not the small ones like they are kept mostly in the corner of the room uh, like a decoration so i i i think this was also from the lord and a message that uh, to to some of us that god wants to use us you know um like like that flower was which is used to beautify a room uh god wants to use us uh some of us you know uh to to uh you know be an attraction or be a beauty to the church these are the two things i wanted to share brother 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So let us all pray and let us pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the prophetic anointing be released in us in a greater measure. And let us know what are the giftings that the Lord has given us also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Is there anybody here who likes to draw? Is there anybody here who likes to do art artwork? Any art yes, or drawing? Brother. Yes, brother. I do. Yeah, yeah. So the Holy Spirit is inspiring you, okay? And anybody drawing with pencil? Yes, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Holy Spirit is inspiring. Anybody, you, you, sometimes you feel like dancing, you know, while you're worshiping the Lord. Yes, brother. And I saw a lady rejoicing on the road, running, you know, rejoicing. All right, right. Yeah, any, anybody want to share anything the Lord is revealing to you all? So, 
Any, 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 anybody want to share? Uh, brother, I saw an image of a basket uh, with blue and white ribbons. Um, and the second one is a, a, a coffee table. Uh, one uh, leg is uh, crooked and there is a problem in the house. That means in the family. And God uh, asked the, the, the whole family to pray and God will solve the problem. And uh, there's a, another image of a key. And the Lord says, uh, do praise and worship and uh, he will open. It's the, the praise and worship is the key to open many of the talents. Any, any, anybody else want to share? Brother, I saw the image of a deer. Okay. So what, what is the interpretation? Any, any Anybody uh, else want to share? Any, any, anybody else want to share? Okay, then we come back tomorrow. So until then, goodbye and keep praying. And if you want, you can continue to praise and worship the Lord for some time. Yeah. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all. God